Hi. Sorry, I'm back late. I'm trying to get this to cooperate. Anyway, um, well, I guess back to my series on, um, dealing with doctors as you get older with somebody with a blatant personality disorder. Oh, can you see her? There's Lily. Talk about somebody who's getting older. She, by the way, when I got her, she was wicked sick last December. Um, she, her owner had died and she hadn't had treatment and she was 4.9 pounds. And um, a couple weeks ago, she went back to the vet for a follow-up and she's now 7.7 .7 pounds. She's doing great. So that's good. There she is. Um, anyway. So to recap a little bit, I had surgery just over two months ago and it was laparoscopic, which means that they poked holes in me rather than slice me wide open, which is good. Um, and one of the wounds was not healing the same way see most of them look like normally you get a cut you know it's sealed over there's a little pink scar it's fine um one of them was just weird and different from the others um it had like this little red bump and um and the skin on top of it was dry it was very strange um so I had to follow up my surgeon's office and they're like, yeah, it's probably just a stitch that hasn't dissolved inside. It's no big deal. Don't worry about it. And, um, and then I had to follow up with my GP and he was like, mm, that's strange. And, um, they did a, um, a lab test on it and, uh, it turns out I am MRSA, which is a staph infection that is resistant to antibiotics. Oh, I should stop swinging. I swing in this chair and <laughs> it'll make you sick. Sorry. Um, so it's a pretty serious infection. Has a pretty relatively high mortality rate. Um, and they, they put me on an antibiotic. Luckily, I'm actually allergic to penicillin, which is the one that this infection is like it doesn't do anything that actually makes it stronger. So I did not have penicillin. That was a lucky break. Um, but the antibiotic they did put me on, uh, also is not working. Um, so it's actually progressing. Uh, I called my doctor back. They're the ones that actually prescribed it. And they're like, yo, this is, uh, you need to talk to your surgeon. What they actually think happened is they think there's a little bit of something in there. It could be a stitch. It could be anything. But they expect they're going to have to open that little wound up and get whatever's out of there out and um, flush it. But they can't do that until the infection is gone because with a MRSA infection, if it gets in your bloodstream, then it's deadly. So they got to get this infection knocked out first. And... So, um, this was all done behind the scenes. My doctor's office called the surgeon's office and, oh, by the way, what she's sitting on is, that's not a real plant, obviously. That's a, a cat tree next to actual plants. But anyway, I'm just looking at this thing. It looks ridiculous. But, um, so they, um, the surgeon's office set me up with a doctor's appointment with the same woman who completely dismissed it the last time and said that it was just uh, an undissolved stitch and don't worry about it. And um, I, I actually don't have any symptoms other than this, you know, weirdness on the actual surface of the wound, even though it's all inside. Um, I don't have a fever. I don't have anything that... Like that, the, the only thing that I have is that my anxiety lately has spiked. And um, I'm like, it's like I drank a pot of coffee. I'm on like an adrenaline rush, which is my body trying to 
go on full defense mode because, um, yeah, uh, it's trying to kill this infection. So I was very concerned about being just dismissed and have this infection just start raging inside of me instead of being, you know, like have her say, oh yeah, you're just on an antibiotic already. Just relax. You can't relax with a MRSA infection. So, um, oh, then I can't see her. She's even looking at you. Um, I, against all better judgment, um, utilizing the, uh, avoidant personality disorder anger to override my normal, you know, tendencies to just shut up and go along. Um, I called and asked for an office manager and I explained, Hey, I've got this serious thing. And this person saw it and missed it and dismissed it last time. And I'm really a little nervous about seeing her again and having a repeat. And, um, was there somebody else that could be seen and, um, apologized 900 times where she said, no, what you're doing is self advocating. And that's a really good thing because in fact, my doctor's office had called and requested me to see the surgeon and they just gave me this RN appointment. Well, I don't know what she is. RPN? PR? I don't know. She, she's not the doctor. She's not the surgeon. Um, and she's made a mistake the last time. So, um, the office manager, having looked through my file, agreed that I needed to see my surgeon um, and that it needed to be stepped up because uh, again, I had a lab work that proved that I had this infection. Um, and so I am going to see my surgeon. But uh, I feel like crap. I feel like I was a pain in the ass. I feel like who the hell am I to second guess doctors? I feel like, you know, I'm just a pain in the ass. <laughs> I like, I'm just complaining. I'm just bitching. I'm just wanting extra special care or something. And actually she told me twice that no, what I was doing is the right thing because this is serious and that it was sort of falling through the cracks and that she completely agreed that this other person, um, missed it and that she totally understood why I was like, well, maybe I should see somebody. Not only did she think that that was appropriate, but also thought that I really should be seeing the surgeon, which is what my doctor said. So now I'm going to have to deal with sort of feeling like, you know, who the hell was I and what did I think I was doing and beating myself up and I'm going to beat myself up. But I'm also going to go and and head to this appointment and and get this infection taken care of. Um, you know, it it's a squeaky wheel thing, and um, it needed to be done. You know, it it needed to be done, and. Um, Again, I feel like crap. I feel like I'm criticizing somebody who's, who's, you know, I mean, I don't think she's trying to be dismissive and awful and, and all this. I mean, how does she know? She probably does see like a bajillion of these things and mine just happens to actually be a, a possibly deadly infection. Um, that's not common. And was probably picked up in the hospital because that's where it hangs out. Um, 
I don't know. It happened. They missed it, but I feel like awful for pointing it out and for, again, being the one who's like, meh. But they, are, they actually appreciate that I'm, again, self-advocating. So whatever, I will, I will deal with feeling like garbage and feeling like uppity and just who the hell am I to criticize somebody. But sometimes you, you have to, you have to do it. You have to. You have to, to make sure that your health is, you know, a priority. When it comes like this, I mean, it's up to a 30% mortality rate for the infection I have. I can't fool around with it. Um, I mean, I got elderly cats to take care of. <laughs> Um, so if you are in that kind of situation and you don't have somebody else who is going to advocate for you, this is actually is super common. People will have, you know, a family member, a partner or something like that. Who's just like, okay, you're going to the doctor. I don't have that. Um, I, I have an entire video somewhere. I have a lot of videos um, where it talks about the anger that people with avoidant personality disorder have um, and how it might feel sort of inappropriate or whatever. Um, but to use the anger to get something done. And I've, I've talked about it specifically in the past about... Um, like how to have relationships with people, how to um, have breakthroughs with people where you need them to do something that they're not doing. Um, you know, how to get angry enough to start talking to somebody in general. Um, but that's what I did. I was like sort of running through my head, imagining how absolutely pointless and useless this appointment is going to be because I was totally dismissed by this person the first time. She, I'm sure she's going to do it a second time. She's just like, well, why are you here wasting my time looking at the same thing again that I already told you was no problem? Um, and I got myself good and angry about it and called. And I mean, I was very, I was heightened. I mean, I had like that almost like adrenaline panicky Thing in me when I was talking just because I was like working that anger and getting that sort of energy in order to go through it but I was I was calm with them and just stated my point is like here's the facts here's this here's this here's this and I'm nervous about seeing this person when this is so, such a serious thing and again it turned out that it was an error on their part for me to even go to this person. I should have, based on what the doctor said and the surgeon said and everything else. Um, well, no, my doctor and the testing said I should have seen the surgeon. I should have seen somebody with, like, a lot of experience. And not somebody who was just, like, checking things off a list. Which is what it seemed like this person was doing the first time I saw her. Um... So yeah, use the anger and, and self-advocate if you need to. And also there's somebody who watches my videos who's going through a procedure this week. And um, I hope that it's going well and it's turning out. And, you know, there's a saying that happens with pregnant people. Um... Everybody tells you their horror stories because nothing ever happens twice. So if you knew somebody that some terrible thing happened to, there's no way it's going to happen with your pregnancy. I hope the same thing is happening with this procedure and I'm the one with the infection and the procedure goes absolutely great.
and works out and everything is better. I mean, the thing is that for the surgery I had, it's above average and above expectations positive benefit. That's good. Except getting there, I had to get opened up and you know, I have this infection that I have to deal with, which is a minor inconvenience, but it's not something I can let go. It's if I let it go, it would kill me, which would be why would go, why would I go through a big surgery and then just let it kill me? That'd be really lame. Anyway, those fingers, bye.